coastline is moving landward as sea level goes up. Over about the past 100 years, we've seen about nine inches of sea level rise here in Florida. There are already signs of it all around us, a large-scale loss of coastal ecosystems. We're also seeing increased rates of erosion on many of our beaches and many of our shorelines. And there's going to be a lot more flooding. I mean, saltwater intrusion is going to be a very big problem for a lot of these communities uh, because there are already places where we have a lot of water shortages in Florida. The saltwater pushes further underground and damages and turns salty our drinking water supply. We know now that sea level has been rising and is going to rise more regardless of what we do. And therefore now we're talking increasingly about the idea of adaptation, which means how do we adapt our coastal communities to the fact of a rising sea. Well, the best way for local governments to try to address sea level rise is for them to plan, plan, and plan more. Florida Sea Grant is trying to help communities uh, basically in two different ways. First, we're doing a lot of research and work trying to analyze the different types of uh, planning tools that might be available to local governments to try to address sea level rise and evaluate the strengths and weaknesses and the costs and benefits of each of these types of tools. Really, we're trying to expand the toolbox. In the first year of this grant, we're spending a lot more of our time doing research and writing about these tools, and then as we start to wrap that up, we will increasingly be going out to local governments and working directly with them on outreach and extension to make them aware of what we've done. Sea level rise is going to have a lot of impacts and already has been having some impacts in Florida. For example, the location of the coastline is moving landward as sea level goes up. And this is very rapid in some places in Florida because we have a very flat landscape. So even a little bit of rise in sea level can really move the uh, shoreline quite a ways landward. In addition, there's going to be a lot more flooding. There are two different ways that flooding tends to occur. First, it's just by the inundation because the sea level is higher. But also one thing that not as many people are thinking about is that uh, flooding also comes from a lack of drainage. And in very low-lying coastal areas, in many cases, there may only be a few inches between the outfall of a stormwater system and the ocean. As ocean levels go up even a small bit, you get less drop uh, in that stormwater system. And suddenly, if you have a heavy rain, it can't drain as fast as it should or properly. So you're getting much, much more flooding that way. It's also very important to consider that we can lose a lot of infrastructure, both through erosion and through flooding. So for example, roads are lost due to erosion, so transportation can be impacted, but also sewer systems can be damaged because many times they were not built uh, intending to be submerged underwater. So there are many different infrastructure elements that really need to be considered, and those are very costly issues for local governments. And finally, we need to consider uh, ecosystem impacts. Of course, one of the most common responses to erosion or sea level rise is the desire to build seawalls or bulkheads to protect property. Yet if this takes place all around Florida, we stand a real risk of losing a lot of our estuaries that are really nurseries for commercially and recreationally important fish species. Florida has one of the most comprehensive planning statutes in the United States, and it's really been a model for many other states. And yet at this point, it doesn't account for sea level rise in any of the required elements. So really, local governments need to be proactive and start to think about sea level rise even before it's required. Overall, our real goal in this project is to get local governments and the public engaged in a real dialogue about what is their vision for their community and how do they hope to achieve that vision. It's very likely that sea level rise is going to include a lot of costs and a lot of changes for everyone. And we want local governments to be proactive with their communities and envisioning how they are going to use their limited resources to adapt their community to the future.